my phone's off. Appreciate you taking some time out. <laughs> Come on now. You're busy dude, man. I still haven't grown since last time you seen me. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. So, uh, cut that off. Cut that off. Yes. Everything off. Darren was raised mostly here in Georgia. He had a few years in Colorado where we lived before we moved here, but mostly here in Georgia, in, in Ackworth, Georgia. Suburban, good schools, you know, the barbecues, the fun, it was your typical middle-class neighborhood. His mom is intelligent. I feel like I'm intelligent. You know, we, we've both studied hard and we've taught them from an early age to, you know, at, you know, value education. And so they always excel in school. And then next thing you know, when he gets on the field, a light bulb comes on. He just starts taking off and just destroying people. Even back then, I saw flashes that this kid can be something special. I had a real good childhood, honestly. Two parents that was there raised me and my sister the right way. Good neighborhood, good school system, you know. Mm -hmm. It was probably rough for me just because, uh, you know, I was friends with a lot of, like, white kids. I was never hesitating as to who I wanted to be around. It just happened to be that way. Black kids I played sports with or went to school with used to just kill me all the time. Just like, you're not black enough, you're not this, you're not that. So it was kind of like just lost in that world. I noticed changes in the way he would act, and also, uh, I think maybe he might have dealt in our pill cabinet a little bit here or there. You know, I've had some injuries, and I noticed there were some pain pills that were in the cabinet, and I just kind of noticed that, hey, I haven't taken many of them, and most of them are gone now, so I wondered, oh, man, you know, maybe I did take them, maybe I didn't. He became a little more laid back, and not so much anxious, you know, and just really kind of going with the flow. I was like, well, no, that's not going to be my kid. I, it, it just can't be, right? And, and subconsciously can can hide it from even yourself. So. Ready to roll? All right. Slate it. Mark. So how old were you when you started using drugs? I was 15, sophomore year of high school. What kind of drugs were you using? Uh, started off with uh, like pills, and I started like smoking weed like probably like a year later, like my junior year, and drinking around like 16. But yeah, I started with pills. As soon as I touched it, it just triggered for me, and so I I, I was hooked ever from the first time. So from your first time, how soon after that were you seeking the next high? I mean, immediately. Like once I started linking up with other people, I could get that same that high that feeling while linking up with those people, it was like, that made, gave me like a false definition of, okay, these people are accepting me, like this is like an area that I, that I belong in. That was like my mindset. Works the Waller, that's his go-to target. Touchdown! When my son got a scholarship at Georgia Tech, I was super ecstatic. I mean, just couldn't even describe the feelings that I had. Darren Waller. Oh, I was very proud, very proud, and in very good school to see him get that on his athletic ability, but knowing that he could have gotten that scholarship academically, it was unbelievable. Once I was going into tech, like I felt like I had to take my partying and using like to a whole nother level. I'm trying to get with anyone that would want to be around me and it's any party I could see, which is everywhere. I'm going out four, five, six nights a week. You were going out six nights a week. There's only seven days in a week. Yeah. Is it fair to say 
that you play football under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Yeah. Going to throw, got a man open. He's got his target. Darren Waller from Ackworth, Georgia. At this point, I was just saying, hey, you know, he's going to go there. I know he's going to party hard, but everybody parties pretty hard when they go to college. So I figured he would have a good time, but I didn't think it as a bigger problem. My parents knew I was smoking weed, but they didn't know I was smoking weed as much as I was, and they didn't know I was doing all the other drugs that I was doing. How bad did the drug use get in college? I mean, it was just, I would do anything that you put in front of me, really. Mm -hmm. Talking lolly, ecstasy, cocaine, anything you put in front of me, I was snorting it, popping it. Anything? I didn't get to meth. How many drug tests did you fail in college? Um, on record, apparently it's two, but I would always, I mean, I would always be trying to cheat drug tests too. I would have a five hour energy bottle and cut a hole in the bottom of my girdle. And I could just like squeeze it out and make it look like I was peeing, but it was like someone else's. Who all knew about your, your drug use? I mean, it sounds like it's a full-on addiction now. Yeah. Are you good with all this? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Is, is your, do you feel it's inappropriate? Uh, as long as Darren's fine with it. Yeah, okay. I'm cool. We're good. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't think anyone knew except the people I was doing it with. With the 28th pick in the sixth round, number 204, the Baltimore Ravens select Darren Waller. Wide receiver from Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. yeah Darren Waller is a Raven! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Darren Waller is a Raven! You guys draft Darren Waller 2015. You had to hear some rumblings about Darren coming out of Georgia Tech, the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. What would do you want? Well, I mean, the first thing I did was look at the tape. He's six foot six. He runs four four two, jumped forty some inches, and he caught everything they threw to him. My thought is he's gonna be a first and second round type guy for sure. It doesn't get to be the fifth or sixth round until they start talking about this Darren Waller from Georgia Tech. And I just got like, hey, 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 oh I've looked at this guy. This guy is in my top three or four receivers for the draft. Why are we talking about him down here in the sixth round? Then they went through it. They said it's a character problem, you know? It's, he's got character issues. Those teams there, of course, they pressed me with the questions. They knew what was going on in college, or, or, or most of it. I knew I had to lie my ass off. I'm like, nah, like, that's behind me. That's just who I was then. My thought is, OK, maybe he can overcome it. <laughs> Kick off cover, let's go. Everybody's running somewhere. Find a spot, go to work, let's go. How did you see playing football in the NFL as an addict? <sighs> I was miserable because it's a lot of stuff. It's a long day. It's a lot of meetings, a lot of film study. If you really want to be good, like it's, yeah. it's a lot of stuff that you got to do. I wasn't trying to do none of that. I was trying to get high, go about my business, punch the clock, put my time in. One of the last ones in the building, one of the first ones out. Let's go, Waller. You all right? Get up. Well, the interesting thing was there's like two Darren Wallers. All right, mark it off. Mark it off. The one Darren Waller is tall, good looking, articulate, great guy. That's the Darren Waller that, you know, you wanted to see. Then there's the other Darren Waller that like, you're kind of like, well, where are you? Darren, you all right? Let's go then. Let's go, baby. Go make a play. Go make a play. I could tell, just like his mom can, I can tell talking to him, I can hear in his voice that all was not well within his soul. You know, and some things, you know, have to play out. And whenever you're dealing with addiction, we've learned that the hard way, and you can't force help onto people. We see different letters come from the NFL. That's when I knew something was going on. I didn't know exactly what, what I could put my finger on, but I knew, you know, the failed drug tests were coming. The NFL suspends you for a year. You may have just thrown your career away. 
How did you feel receiving the news that you were suspended? I was like, I'd rather the league put me out of my misery than look like a quitter and come out and say, like, I don't want to play football anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was just failing every test. And then it was just like, they had to put me out. So that's why, that's what I wanted. If guys would have reached out, would you accept the help? I wasn't ready to help myself. What was rock bottom for you? I mean, for me, it's two months into the suspension, but I'm still doing the same thing, still getting as high as usual, even more than ever. I was like, well, I guess I should just move out of my apartment in Baltimore because I ain't going back. Like, football's done. You know, while I'm here, like, I'm, I'm going to get high while I'm here. So I go pick up from wherever I'm usually picking up from. I'm thinking it's what I usually get and what I have been getting for years, but it's not. It's it's fentanyl. It knocked me out in my car for like four or five hours. I was in that parking lot right there on Owens Mills. And it just all hit me. It was just like the Ravens were playing in their first preseason game. I'm literally a quarter mile away from the practice facility. I'm closer to death than I ever was before. Stay tuned for the Ravens and the Redskins. When Ben tore his Achilles, remember that game? Oh, yeah, that's right, you were. Right. Before we were playing the game, Darren, he was passed out in his car because he got us some pills that were laced with fentanyl. Man, he could have died right there. And I just woke up later, it was nighttime. It was like, you know, something got changed. Like, forget football, man, like, just for me and my life. I remember old guy used to tell me all the time, I don't care if you ever win a race, you're always going to be my horse, right? And that's what I used to tell him. Always going to be in your corner no matter what. But you got to get some help. You got to get some help. Went to McLean, Borden Cottage in Maine. I had structure for those 30 days I was in rehab and I was moving, like things were getting done. Progress was being made. That was a game changer. They dealt with it on a mental aspect as well as the physical and helped him to look at his life and see what got him there. Along that way, I was feeling all that pain, but I was treating people bad. I wasn't a good friend. I was kind of taking my pain out on the world and so it wasn't always me being a victim, which I thought I was. I was being the culprit in a lot of things just realizing that I have the power to change it. That whole experience was just necessary. When he came home, believe me, that's when we definitely knew it was all different. He was working out, you know, I saw him, you know, changing the way he was eating. I was like, wow, this guy really wants it. I was like, I need to get a job. And my dad was like, I know just the thing. They hired me as a grocery clerk. I was stocking shelves. I was bagging at the front and putting in work, and I value my work. Like, I make the shelves look nice, make a good display. Those little things start to add up and carry over into income habits. So you're sober now, clean. You get a phone call to go back to play football. The level of excitement from that compared to draft day, I was 100 times more excited being reinstated because I wasn't valuing football back then. And now it's like I worked so hard to get back and every single aspect of it was true, was clean. I felt like it was just a reset button. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Darren. <laughs> what do you have, Darren? It's not often in life that you get to hit the reset button, right? He got to hit the, he got the opportunity to reset football, but more or less in his life, man. And that's the part that that really stirs my soul, man, because you can't, I, I talked to him about that, man. You in the boat, big boy? Do you know, man, how many people, they never get the opportunity on either one of those, right? But just on your life, man, hitting the reset button. And God's telling you, you got another chance. Now what you gonna do with it, right? Darren Waller. He 
was on that Baltimore practice squad and they were playing the Raiders and because he was inactive he didn't have a uniform on but he's just out there running routes and catching balls and John Gruden said who is that guy by the time they got on the plane to go home they assigned him to the active Raiders. roster with the Raiders it still hasn't really hit me yet I guess but to be able to sign this and really be a part of a team I don't know man I just really can't put it into words it's crazy He should be doing that here in Baltimore. I'm happy for him. And I'm looking forward to when we play him, because he's going to be a challenge. But I, I'd, be, I'd be dishonest if I told you I wasn't a little disappointed. You know that he's not here. Darren Waller was telling me that he often thinks about how far he's come the last three years. So when I asked him how much of his success is tied to his sobriety, he said all of it. People out there are real deal suffering. And their story lines up with mine. I'm just trying to show them that there's something better on the other side of that pain, of that suffering. And if I can reach one person, that's, that's good enough for me.